Hi everybody, my name is Stephanie Bryan and I'm based at Edinburgh University. I'm going to talk about my project developing tools to investigate the infection status of endangered antelope populations um, and particularly in terms of disease risks between wildlife and livestock in order to support conservation reintroductions. So first of all I'm just going to provide a bit of context to the project um, and so these are some of the main pressures that are exerted on arid land ecosystems. And the key point for my project is that they tend to lead to increased land sharing between wildlife and livestock. And this leads to some risks as a result. And so because of these increased interactions between different species, this leads to an increased risk of disease events. And this can be disease outbreaks, changes in the transmission dynamics, um, and also pathogens spilling over um, into different species. This can lead to a loss of biodiversity and also risks to humans, so human food insecurity and also impacts on human livelihoods um, due to things like livestock disease and also health of humans is affected as well. And these are some of the interventions that we can use to try and address these risks. And my research focuses on the reintroduction of antelope species um, in the Sahela Sahara region. And by restoring biodiversity, reintroductions can help to improve the health of ecosystems. And we know that in healthy ecosystems, there's a lower risk that diseases will be transmitted into different species. And also reintroductions aim to try and allow sustainable land use. But my project particularly focuses on a couple of the other interventions we can use. Um, so things like health surveillance and identifying some of the key infection risks. And so for this particular bit of my project, I'm really focusing on trying to understand better the infection status of endangered antelope and also trying to understand how that relates to the infection status of livestock in the same regions um, and, and then how that can impact on reintroductions and translocations. And in another bit of my project, I'll also be looking at how the genetics of the immune system, um, how that can impact on disease at a population level. But for today, I'll focus on some research um, that I've been doing, looking at samples that have been collected from wild ungulates in Tunisia. Um, and this map shows where these wild ungulates live. And um, we've, these, these samples have been opportunistically collected um, by my colleague um, during health um, programs or translocations. Um, and it's the mixture of both blood samples and fecal samples. Sorry, I'm a little screen issue. Um, and these are the species that we've been looking at. So primarily we've been focusing on endangered antelope species, so the scimitar horned oryx and the adax. But we also have samples from Dorcas gazelles and Barbary sheep. And this is really interesting because these species have a slightly different way that they interact with their environment and their ability to cross from the fence protected areas into some of the other areas where they have more contact with livestock. So in terms of goals of the project, the first goal is to try and evaluate the infection status of wild ungulates, um, of threatened wild ungulates, um, and see how this relates to reintroductions. And then the second objective is to try and identify which infections are particularly likely to pose risks at the wildlife livestock interface. And we're interested in risks in both directions. So, how do infected wild ungulates pose a risk to livestock? And what risks do infections in livestock pose to wild ungulates or reintroduced animals? And in terms of the methodology, like I said, we've collected samples opportunistically, both blood and fecal samples. And then we're using two different approaches. We're using traditional um, molecular methods, which are PCR-based and then Sanger sequencing. We're also using some more novel next generation sequencing approaches. And this is really nice because this allows us to um, look for a, 
a broader range of pathogens um, and try and increase our, our target range. Um, and also we're trying to develop methods that rather than looking for specific things, um, we can try and look much more broadly at the, the general health status. And in terms of results, so we're still at quite an early stage of the project, but already we've identified that quite a lot of these animals are carrying um, blood pathogens and blood parasites. Um, and so we found some species which um, are commonly shared with livestock, so things like Anaplasma marginal, Elichia ruminantium, and then also some species that we typically tend to see in antelope and other ungulates, so things like Teleria species Dama gazelle. We've also found some evidence of novel bacteria that aren't very well characterized, but there are reports of these bacteria or closely related bacteria um, causing disease both in humans and in wildlife. So these are examples of emerging infectious diseases and that's something we want to investigate more closely. And then in terms of future work, what we'd like to do is compare the infection status of um, endangered antelope both before and after release. Um, and so we can get an idea of how contact with livestock is altering the infection status of these animals. Um, and also to try and actually evaluate what impact these infections are having on health. So is the presence of infection leading to disease? And the way we'd like to do that is to conduct clinical examinations at the same time as collecting the samples so that we can get an idea of that. And in terms of impact, this will give us a better understanding of health status in these endangered antelope species. Um, it will allow us to try and understand what risk these infections pose and to try and identify what we call One Health solutions. So this is trying to look at the broader health of the ecosystem and try and identify solutions that can, where to, ta where to target intervention. So should we be aiming to vaccinate livestock or should we be aiming, aiming to um, vaccinate the wild, wildlife or can we change the way that they interact to try and alter the disease risk? Um, and hopefully this will help us to identify strategies that can be used in reintroductions to allow more successful land sharing between different species. And so I'd like to thank um, my PhD sponsors, Marwell Wildlife and BBSRC, and particularly Marie who collected these samples, um, and then my PhD supervisors, um, as well as my colleagues um, at Edinburgh University. And of course, we couldn't conduct this research um, without our partners in Tunisia, um, both at the, the laboratory and the um, national parks. Um, and also some of our other collaborators going forwards, um, hopefully we'd like to expand this work to also look at the, some of the antelope that have been released in Chad. Um, and so um, going forwards, we'll be working um, with environment agency Abu Dhabi to look at some of their stored samples from pre-release animals um, and hopefully also being able to collect samples in the future with the help of the Sahara Conservation Fund um, and the Smithsonian Institute. Thank you.